Welcome to Highway 64 in Apex, North Carolina. On this edition of Rollin' Rambles, which we are going to call the Trippin' Balls edition, I've cranked the frame rate on my camera way down to 15 frames a second instead of 60. What this means is everything will look very whooshy and blurry. It's going to look really cool, and as it gets darker, you'll be able to see things that you didn't know you even could. Anyway, Today we are going to talk about an incident that happened in my youth um, past high school, but my first introduction to a completely unnecessarily nasty, vindictive woman um, that just sort of came out of nowhere. So let's get right into this mess because I think that, first of all, you're, you're not going to, this is not going to end the way that you think it's going to end. I'll just put that out there right now. You do need to listen to the end. This is a mess. It's a hot mess. I am, to this day, over 20 years later, still angry about it. And I still hope that this woman, wherever she is, God knows she's probably in her 40s or something by now. God knows what she's done with her life. But I wish the worst on her. I hate her, and I hope that she suffers miserably and steps on Legos for the rest of her natural life. You will see why. And if you've watched my roll and ramble about my ex-wife, all of the abuse, all of the manipulation, all of the yelling, having all of the pictures in the house smashed, I, I could have been spared so much. You might be going, well, wait a minute, was this your ex-wife? Is this like how you met her? No. No, it is not. Um, granted, the ex-wife, because of the sum, the, the sum total of the damage that she did, the sum total of my time and life that she wasted and burned off and ruined, um, she, in the grand scheme of things, was a far worse person for me to have met. This one person, um, this one woman was so bad just in the one thing that she ended up doing, that um, I will never not hate her. And I will pull no punches on this. So, here we go. When I was in my late teens, I installed cable for a company that's now out of business, so it doesn't matter, but at the time, it was a contract company for Time Warner Cable. And I installed cable and specifically cable internet and also TV services because that's just something you did. If you were installing cable internet, you were probably also installing TV services at the same time. <clears throat> we didn't have cable telephone yet. That would come later after I quit. But I was a cable installer and I was good with computers. It got to the point that me being good with computers was actually a big benefit because one of the things that was required to get paid as a contractor installing cable internet to verify that you actually got on the internet, that the connection worked when you walked out the door, was that you had to get a public IP address. Remember, there are no, no one has net routers yet. Those things are in their infancy. Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi almost doesn't exist yet. So. Wi-Fi actually started to be deployed near the end of my cable installation career. So we're just installing computers. We're installing internet to single computers. And those single computers are getting a public IP address. There is no firewalling, no NAT, nothing. And most of them are running 95 and 98, Windows 95 and 98. XP had been out, but not for too long. Almost no one had it. Almost no one had Windows 2000 either. Almost everything I saw was Windows 95 and 98. Most of it was Windows 95. Yeah, I know, right? Six, seven years later, people were still running Windows 95. What a shock. Anyway, we had to pull a public IP address and write it down. Otherwise, we wouldn't get paid for the internet connection because we couldn't prove that we actually got it online. There is an element of unfairness to this because while it was technically our job to do this, to get this internet address, to get them online or whatever, it's not just the cable network or the cable hardware that can get you on the, you know, that, that can have a problem getting you on the internet. It can be the computer. 
And in the days of Windows 95 and 98, there were a lot of problems. People do not realize how damned good they have it with computers today. Stability was a dream, really. It, stability in computing was not something you could really expect out of a 95 or 98 machine. Um, on a long enough timeline, they were guaranteed to crash and have to be rebooted at some point. The nice thing about NT and 2000 and XP, all the NT kernels, was that, okay, maybe not. Maybe it's not so easy, especially for NT4 and below, to get everything up and running. But once you had it up and running, in general, once you had everything figured out, it would be more stable. If you touched it, it would break in horrible ways and you would suffer miserably trying to get it to play nice again because NT was only stable once you got it stable. But until then, <laughs> uh, you install a service pack, you basically prayed that everything didn't come crashing down. It was bad. So we, have, we are spoiled on NT5 kernels and NT6 today, where before, back in, back in those days, the stability was a joke. Um, and one of the things that came along with that is the old Windows socket system was notoriously fragile. The um, layered service provider architecture of WinSock, you could insert things into the LSP that would, I mean, it's, it's layered service provider means exactly what it says. Basically, all these things would filter what went through network interfaces and decide whether or not they wanted to do anything with it. <clears throat> so if you installed an internet firewall or antivirus or whatever, or if you installed like a packet capture monitor, um, it would install a WinSock um, service layer and that would intercept packets and decide what to do if they wanted to modify them or replace them or trigger some action or whatever. So WinSock LSP back in the day you could have an item in the layers that was not behaving well that would essentially cut off network connectivity. That would make it so it, you just, it just couldn't talk. Your, your machine just flat out could not talk to anything else properly. And it was immensely frustrating because if something in the LSP broke, you could not pull a public IP address. But cable guys especially back then, didn't know jack about computers. They didn't know squat. <clears throat> so these cable guys who didn't know anything about computers to speak of, you know, had a minimal working knowledge to get that IP address, check the internet, whatever, but they didn't know how to fix them. They didn't know how to do maintenance. They didn't know anything about software architecture or any of that. These are pretty normal guys. Uh, a lot of them didn't even have good troubleshooting skills, but the thing is, cable doesn't require that. <clears throat> cable requires a warm body that can be trained to do some things. And your technical skills don't have to be that great. Actually, you can make pretty good money doing cable installation if all you do is bust your ass to move quickly. Um, as long as you can get the job done most of the time, you're good to go. But anyway, Cable internet, you had to pull a public IP and document it to get paid, and the computers could easily end up causing you to be unable to get online. That's not your problem, that's the customer's problem. It's their computer, right? So because of this, um, I started to get real good at fixing this, and I would actually get pulled off of jobs to help troubled technicians get a public IP so that people could actually get paid for their work. Unfortunately, I made the mistake of being a pushover and doing that without realizing, hey, I'm not getting paid for that. But that's another story. Anywho, <clears throat> what does this have to do with the woman that you hate forever? Well, it became sort of a habit, muscle memory even. I could fix computers without thinking about it at this point. I, I got so good at fixing things that I got into this habit of just fixing things, and it persists even today, although I am quite the master today compared to what I was over 20 years ago. So I met this girl in, an, I think, an AOL chat room, 
On AOL's Insta Messenger, her Insta Messenger name was Raven Angel, R H A Y V E N, or at least I think it was. That could have been some other girl, but I'm pretty sure it was Raven Angel, and she lived in Graham, North Carolina. She knew a guy named Archie that I bought these uh, little show swords from, who was a real cool guy, and I think he's dead by now. Um, and and you know what? I don't care um, if if she'll never find this video, and if she does, then hey, you um, lady. I hate you. You were an asshole to me. What you did was unforgivable and unconscionable. And I, I hope that you rot in hell. Anyway, <clears throat> she'll never find it, but there it is if she does. And I could be wrong on the AIM name, so just don't hold me to it. Anyway. Editing Jody here. Think I found her. This dating profile that hasn't been used in years, but apparently updates your age automatically. About my age, about my area, and it's good to see that she's fat, in an open relationship, and a single parent at the same time. There's some weird stuff going on here, but the picture is not of the other girl that I thought it could be, who I have no malice whatsoever towards. So I'm gonna go ahead and say that this is her. Screw you, lady. I was autistic. I continue to be autistic. For some reason, you don't grow out of that. But I was also extremely socially incapable. I was inept. I was socially disabled. I didn't know how to make friends, much less pursue someone in a sexual way. So, you know, trying to meet girls was tough, uh, pretty much impossible. Um, and then I end up invited to this girl's house, which, you know, the red flags probably should have gone off there because why would a girl just invite me over from the internet? But it was a much more innocent time. The whole predator thing wasn't really that big of a deal back then because Honestly, there weren't that many people. There were still there was still a degree of barrier to entry, and uh, I don't know. We were just a lot. There was a lot. It, it's sort of the good old days of the internet. Anyway, I go to this girl's house, which was like some trailer. There were some dudes there too that I guess lived there as well, um, and I didn't know what to do. Like, like, how do you even pursue this? I don't even know if she invited me over because she's interested in getting to know me. Or if she's just like, yeah, just come hang out, whatever. Um, so I get there and I'm immediately just like, nah, I don't know what I'm doing. I have no idea what I'm doing. So what do I do? Well, you know, I, I sort of end up through one means or another. I don't remember many details, but I end up in front of her computer. Uh, computers are my comfort zone. So I landed in front of a computer. I don't remember why. I don't remember if I was just like, hey, I can fix up your computer, man, while I'm here. Um, but I ended up in front of her computer and just pretty much spent the whole time just fixing up her computer. Um, cause that was what made me comfy. And I ended up just leaving at some point. I don't remember all the details or any of the details much. Um, but I left and nothing ever came of it. I think I never talked to her again. Um, kind of wasn't interested in talking to her again. The only things that I really remember beside the com besides the computer repair part itself is that for some reason she was walking around and her her shirt was up or something like above her belly um, and she wasn't pregnant or anything like her stomach wasn't out it was normal stomach but for some reason around her belly button there was like this star pattern of wrinkles around her belly button. And it was so weird. I was like, what the fuck? And I didn't know what the fuck that was. Today, I can only assume, well, maybe she was very pregnant at one point and it really wrecked her belly button area or something. I don't know. But, um, but I don't know. And that was the only thing that stood out to me. But she didn't really, she didn't actually seem interested in talking to me. And I didn't know how to initiate conversation. So I guess I just, you know, I, I fell into the, the rut of, well, I'm just the weird, odd, one-out guy that, you know, exists and nobody even notices or cares about. So I'll just sit over here and fix up this computer because that's what I'm comfy with. I don't even remember how I left. But I know I fixed her goddamn computer up real fucking well before I left. It was running great. And uh, I never talked to her again and that was the end of it, right? cool. Okay. Nice. And that was it. Right? So end of the story. Uh, right? No. No, you can clearly see there's more video left. This is not going where you're thinking, where you're thinking it's going. You might be thinking that I met this girl again. 
or maybe I messaged her again, you know, out of the blue or whatever, and we ended up together. No, no, none of that happened. I never, ever communicated with this woman ever again for the rest of my life up to this point. And I probably never will or and never will know who the fuck she even was at this point. I don't even remember her name. I don't remember the dude's names that were there. I don't remember anything. But, what, so if you never saw her again and you never talked to her again, how is there more to the story? There's more to the story because one day when I was working, see, she knew that I worked for the cable company, right? Because I, I would have told her that. I would have told her that's what I do. You know, so what do you do? Da, 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 da. <clears throat> oh, I work for Time Warner Cable. I mean, it's not unusual to ask people what they do for work, right? So, where is this going? What, is the, what does the work have to do with any of this? It has to do with the fact that my supervisor called me on the next tell one day, or talked to me in person even, <clears throat> and told me that some woman had called up Time Warner because she wanted to report me and have and she wanted them to fire me for breaking her computer or something to that effect. This bitch had the gall to call up who she thought now I didn't work directly for Time Warner, but she called Time Warner Cable and told them that someone who works for them wrecked her computer and that she wanted them to fire me. I never talked to the woman after this. She never talked to me. So I want you to think about this for a minute. Hang on a sec. The popo pulling someone over. Um, I want you to think about this for a minute. If I never talked to this woman again, then, and, and she just out of the blue calls my employer, or who she thinks is my actual employer, what's up with that? Like, why didn't she reach out to me and say anything? It doesn't make any sense, does it? And that's kind of where I was left, because the last, shall we say, interaction that I had that had anything to do with her was my supervisor at my actual company telling me that a woman called Time Warner to get me fired for breaking her computer. <clears throat> and I didn't know what the hell he was talking about. I'm like, Are, what? What woman? Like, what are you talking about? When was this? And I, and I realized after talking to the supervisor for a while that this the woman that he was talking about was this woman that was in this trailer in Graham, North Carolina that I met. I went over and I fixed her computer and never heard from her again. Why did she go out of her way to call and report me to Time Warner Cable for wrecking her computer? Was her computer really wrecked? Who knows what the hell happened to her computer? For all I know, she, she caught a virus a day or two later because she, who knows, she's probably stupid. Who knows? A lot of people caught a lot of bullshit back in the day. She must have caught some bullshit. I have no idea because she didn't have the balls to say anything to me. But she sure did have no problem calling my employer and trying to get me fired for something that I did or supposedly did wrong to her. You know, I never talked to her again, so and I have no way of confirming what really happened. I don't remember anymore. But supposedly I did her wrong, but why is she calling my employer? And sure enough, I told my supervisor, okay, I think I know who you're talking about. And if it is, it's someone I met on AOL Instant Messenger, and she invited me to her house, and it didn't work out or anything. And, you know, while I was there, I looked at her computer, and I left, and I never talked to her again. But I wasn't working. Like, I don't know who this is. And the thing is, <clears throat> at the time, I don't remember if I worked in that area or not. But it was pretty easy to find out that no work order was assigned to me for her house. So I didn't get fired, but I guess you could kind of say that that was my first brush with what might be considered cancel culture in a way. I mean, I, I hesitate to call it cancel culture because it, it's a far cry from what we have today. Like what we have today is not 
the same as some woman just being a vindictive bitch and calling up your work and trying to get you fired because you were a weirdo. Or be, but yeah, it's like all these things wrapped into one. My first experience as a computer service guy getting handed the whole, you touched it so you own every problem that happens after you touch it fallacy. Um, plus, some woman tries to get you fired because she doesn't like you. You know, that, that happened to me. And I'm autistic. I don't know how the fuck to deal with that. I, I'm in an extreme disadvantage back then. Like today, if someone does that, I'm going to make sure that they pay, you know. But back then, I was this poor kid that was shy as balls because I didn't know what to do. And, and, you know, I thought nobody really liked me. I was a doormat. I was a miserable human being. I was miserable by default, you know. And I tried to just stay small and, and not interact with people because I was afraid of everyone and everything. And for that, for someone like that, you know, and I finally have gotten used to dealing with people in my cable career um, to the point that I'm comfortable, you know, having business interactions. And then this happens. It's like, what the fuck, man? If you want to find something that'll make sure that you never <laughs> try to meet anybody in real life and be buddies with them, never ever trust people god almighty it kind of makes me wonder how the fuck the x thing happened in the first place but you know what happened the x was actually nice to me at first this lady this lady was just me there was it wasn't that she was like shitty to me but it was clear that um there was not going to be any interesting interaction but i was over the, I, I didn't know what to do and yeah, it was just a shit situation all around. But I understand that I was really awkward and probably made people a bit uncomfortable back then. And I understand that people don't know shit about computers or cars or any of that kind of technical stuff. And they just assume the last person that touched it is responsible for anything that might break later. You know, never mind the fact that she, she could have been dumb enough that she downloaded some virus. I don't know. I'll never know. That wouldn't be my fault. But anyway, as far as I was concerned, I had tried. I had a shitty situation. Like this is. I really should have just left. But I was uncomfortable. I didn't know what to do. I locked up. So hey, computer comfort zone, and that worked for me. So I did. I honestly did her a favor, and she tried to get me fired for it. And I had nothing, I wasn't doing work for her. It, she just knew where I worked and decided she was a mega bitch. So, whoever the fuck you are, you know, star wrinkle pattern around the belly button, early 20 something in the, in the 20, in, in the 2000s, uh, Graham, North Carolina trailer woman that knew Archie and I think went by Raven Angel, or maybe it was something else, but yeah, if you find this video, Fuck you. Fuck you with a rake. Why? Because fuck you. And that's all. I, I don't care, you know? I don't care if it's a dick move for me to be like that, you know? It's one of those things where, had it been anything else, <clears throat> if someone called and tried to get me fired later in my life, it'd still be a dick move. But... There's just, it, it, it's so incredible to me. I can't, I don't know what the fuck to say at this point. Like, what would you do, you know? It, it's not like I was some 30-something with experience in the world and all that. I was a fucking scared little 18, 19-year-old that, that was running around and I just tried to do a good thing for someone that I didn't know that, and I was uncomfortable because they wouldn't, you know, they didn't really interact with me. Like, they just sort of left me to my own devices in their stupid house, you know? And then they try to get me fired for trying to do them a favor. Fuck you. Fuck you so hard. You're such a malicious, vindictive, evil person. I can't believe what a nasty person you are. And the worst part is that she didn't have the balls to be mean to my face. Like, at least if she was like, you know, stop fucking up my computer, blah, blah, blah in person, I, you know, it would have hurt a lot to be treated that way, but 
at least she would have been mean to my face. No, she tried to go around and, and destroy my livelihood because I made her uncomfortable or something um, by not interacting with her. I just, I don't know, man. I don't know. It was the most awkward fucking thing that I think I've ever had to deal with. And it, it was nuts. And it wouldn't be the first or the last interaction where I've been uncomfortable and I just, you know, didn't really know what to do. So I didn't really talk to anyone and just sort of found something comfy to do uh, out of the way until things just felt like they were over and I left. You know, that's happened several times in my life. It, it's not... When you get to be my age, which is way past 18, um, you stop giving a shit about what people think about you, which is the most liberating thing in the world. But back then, it was like being punched in the face a few times. It's astonishing how much of an effect it can have. You know, why would you do this? Why? What, what, what horrible seed of evil are you? All right, I've ranted enough. I think this has reached its logical conclusion, so thanks for listening. You know what to do. Like, comment, subscribe, and uh, feel free to send me money if you're bored and have excess. But don't if you don't have excess. Thanks. Uh, I know that I said that the next time that I had, or that I made a video, it was going to be about drivers. Um, that actually is requiring more work than I thought, so I don't know when that video is going to come out. But it is in progress, so yeah. All right, have a good one. Take care. Thanks for listening. Bye.